Hello everybody, so today is a pretty big day for Star Wars Squadrons. As we mentioned in previous episodes, we knew that an update 2.0 was imminent, and today is the day that we get that update. So I won't waste your time, we'll jump straight into the video and talk about what is expected in this update, along with our question day at the end. So let's get right into it. So to start, we're talking about updates to people leaving games and the punishment system. Now, I've got to be honest, I did not expect this to be an update 2.0. I thought it was going to be in a later update, but it looks like they had gone ahead and completely revamped the system. So let me break it down for you. There was a mini interview with Dan Kim, who is a senior systems designer for Squadrons, and basically he explained how that system has been changed. The old system was a safe to leave and match not scored system. So what that means is if somebody left during the briefing meeting before the game, and as soon as you load into the game, there's only four of you, that match was not counted. You would see player abandoned match not counted in the corner of your screen. However, there'd be times where people left halfway through a game, but the match would still be counted, which means you'd be put on a 4v5 and there was nothing you could do and you end up still losing all those points. And as Dan said, he believed that the system was pretty difficult for players to understand when they could leave and unduly punished well-behaved players after abandonment occurred. This meant some players felt robbed of wins, locked in pointless matches or unrewarded for time already spent in leaving safe to leave games. To be honest, even I didn't know when was safe to leave a game either. I always thought I got punished by leaving the briefing meeting before the game even started. There was no timer ticking down and there was no backfill of players. So you were stuck there waiting for people to ready up or just people leaving the game. And I always believed that when I left those type of games, I would get punished as well. Seems like that is all been overhauled too. So how they're solving this is the forfeit system. And basically what that means is that you can actually decide to vote on leaving the game if you feel like you're not going to win or it's just generally pointless on a 3v5, etc. Meaning you do not have to waste your time in ranked games where you are missing two people and you know you're going to lose. But the really interesting thing here is if a team forfeits or loses after a teammate abandons a game, you will still gain full progression rewards, but only take half the skill point losses. Meanwhile, the players that abandon the game will be appropriately punished, as abandoning the game after deployment always results in a loss and lever penalties have been significantly increased, which means they lose more skill points when they leave and have a higher risk of being put in a low priority queue. Another feature that I've been really wanting is the lobby backfill mechanic that they've added to the game. So when you're in the briefing room slash hangar and waiting for a game to start, but there's not 10 players, usually you just had to play that game with whatever people had already left. However, the game will now try to put new people into that game that isn't ready to go, which means if you join and there's eight people and two spaces missing, they'll find two players to put into that game. Now, you do not lose any points while leaving the briefing room slash hangar scene. So say if two people queue up to play a game, one gets through, but the other gets pushed to the main menu. There is no punishment for that player that actually got to that game to not be punished by leaving it and coming back to his friend in the main menu. So this tool is really, really helpful. However, I am a little bit concerned that people will just leave the lobby when they realize they're playing a faction they don't want to play. But people who do leave the briefing room slash hangar stage will not record a loss. They will still suffer some lever penalty points, but nowhere near enough as somebody abandoning the game after deploying into the map. So this is a big, big change that will definitely help people leaving games and putting you in a 3v5. And like I said, I did not know this was going to come in 2.0. I generally thought this was going to be a 2.1 update. So it's amazing that they managed to implement this on this update. Wow. But with that big addition out of the way, let's go through all of the bug fixes and changes. Next up is general. So ranked fleet battle, dogfight and co-op fleet battles versus AI now allow backfill while pilots are waiting in the briefing room slash hangar. We talked about this just a couple of seconds ago. So a situation where you were in the briefing room and there was no timer ticking you down to go into a game. That's changed so the backfill will try and find some new players to join to make it a 10 man game. And if the ticker goes down to zero and there's not 10 players, you get put into the main menu without penalty. But that being said, penalties can be lifted over time by completing matches. So if people are a bit worried that you might leave a game due to your internet connection, do not worry. You can make it up by actually playing and completing games down the line. Minor things like adjusting the brightness of the Star Destroyer's engines when flying too close to them. Fix an issue where PC players who used the minimum requirement GPU couldn't launch the game due to old drivers and many minor fixes and stability improvements across the entire game. In the careers and challenges, they fixed an issue where the career's best stat was inaccurate and fixed an issue where the friendship challenge could not be claimed after competition. Very minor bugs that I think very few people suffered, which are now fixed. Next up is controls. 
First up, if you had an Xbox controller and HOTAS connected to the same computer, there'd be a bug where if you tried to bound a control to a HOTAS, the one on the Xbox would actually unintentionally be rebound as well. That's been fixed. Fix an issue where diagonal thumbstick movement was significantly hindered when using the aviator control scheme. Fix an issue where simultaneous inputs of opposite commands, i.e. your right and your left, would not act as intended. Fix an issue where the HOTAS controls would incorrectly interact with power management when free look was active. Whenever you made changes to your controller configurations but forgot to hit save, the menu will actually remind you beforehand. Fix an issue where the reconnect DualShock message would not be closed after reconnecting the DualShock. Throttle can now be mapped to a HOTUS joystick. Fix an issue where PS4 players using HOTAS would have a delay before their controls would respond after launching from the hangar. They reduce the sensitivity of remapping the HOTAS controls so you don't accidentally map it to something else. Fix an issue with joystick accesses in the diagonal wouldn't work sometimes, mostly found in the radial menus. Keyboard arrow keys can now be used to toggle different input selections. Fix an issue with a HOTAS dead zones could be manually set to exactly 50%. Added binding options to individual COM menu options and fixed an issue where going to the PS4 dashboard would reset the throttle to 50%. Next up is Dogfight. So they improved spawn points on SLEs to help players feel less separated from the fight when respawning. Fix an issue where the pilot banter and match music would continue into the end of the round screen rather than transition out naturally. And fixed a rare issue where the game would crash due to a brief disconnect when transitioning into the match. Okay, so this is the big one. Next up is Fleet Battles. So let's cover the three big things that have changed to Fleet Battles. Number one, big improvements to the AI functionality in Fleet Battle Ranked. This means that if anybody was farming AI on the enemy team and you couldn't because the AI was too far away, this will be fixed. The rank zero bug has been fixed as well as an option to reset your rank. And believe it or not, they've actually made changes to hull hugging or mosquitoing, which was you coming up real close to the Star Destroyer and trying to deal as much damage as you can to it without taking too much fire from the Star Destroyer itself. And of course, we'll be going through all of those three things in big, big detail. Okay, so added the rank reset for Operation 1, which was the first season of Ranked. We've updated AI Starfighter morale values and positioning to prevent exploitive farming of them in fleet battles. AI Starfighter paths have been repositioned in every map, so they'll actually come closer to the player when you really need them. And the morale you gain by killing them have been changed. You gain one when on attack, when previously it was two, and you gain four on defense when previously it was five. This is massive for being on attack because it's essentially cut in half. You will need to farm double the AI now than you used to to get that same advantage. It's going to take a lot longer for a bomber to do so. Capital ship turrets are now much more responsive to changes in player speed. So capital ship weapon hard points are far more effective if you're slower. So again, if you're fast and very far from the Star Destroyer, you'll actually take less damage now. But if you're slower and much more closer to it, you'll take significantly more damage, which good for them, man. I'm really glad they changed this. That should also be a pretty big nerf to tie bombers too. Flagship turrets are now more aggressive when being attacked out of phase. This prevented players from firing ion or proton torpedoes from a far distance, even when they're on defense. So I knew a lot of players would actually do this. They would damage the capital ship, even though they were trying to defend theirs. So that has been tweaked, so you can't do that as much anymore. Fix an issue where players could end up with a negative skill rating instead of the rank zero bug. You'll probably want to reset your rank if you had that. Fix an issue where the hologram wouldn't display correctly in the briefing room. Fix an issue where the flagships could begin to tilt when broadsiding on SLEs. Fix an issue where the marker for the CR-90 would disappear for Imperials after their radar was destroyed. Fix an issue where the flagships could rotate unexpectedly after reaching their final positions. Fix an issue where the CR-90 would fly through the Nadiri dockyard structure. Fix an issue where the Imperial radar would clip through the Nebulon B. Fix an issue where the flagship hull and shield health UI would not update correctly. Fix an issue where if the player killed an ally AI, the game would say their faction earned morale instead of the enemies. And fixed an issue where two alarms could be heard in the final countdown before a match begins. So just a ton of changes there. I'll go into that in just a minute. So next up is practice getting a little bit more content. They added obstacle courses for players to test their flight skills. Fix an issue where the game could infinitely load in practice mode. Fix an issue where some sound effects wouldn't play when changing starfighters or loadouts. Fix an issue when opening the menu during the def cam would cause unintended behavior. Fix an issue where the player could clip through the flagship. 
And finally, fix an issue where the audio would pause when using certain menus. For social, made the messaging clearer for when players without crossplay enabled is invited by a player with crossplay enabled. Come to think of it, I actually think I have crossplay disabled because I've not actually played against any Xbox or PS4 players. Only Steam, Origin or Epic. Strange. They also added a message to inform players in the lobby is full when attempting to join on a friend. Fix an issue where players who try joining a full squadron would be put into a temporary lobby and fix an issue where a player could have the option to promote a friend to leader when they weren't in the same party. Wow. I won't be going over everything in the spectator mode here, but if you really care about what the changes that have been made in spectator, the link to the changes are in the description or in the pinned comment. But all you should really know about spectator is that you will be notified when somebody starts spectating you. Now let's get into the next juicy thing, balance changes. So you're probably wondering, Thai Bombers, have they been rebalanced? And yes, they have. Rejoice. So Thai Bombers default hull has decreased from 2,500 down to 2,000. And the benefits of the reinforced hull have been decreased to plus 50% from plus 60%. If you think there was more nerfs to the Thai Bombers, unfortunately there isn't. There's no changes to the rotary cannon here. There is also no changes to the mean beam either. But don't forget, they have been indirectly nerfed by the changes to the firepower of flagships depending on the speed of your fighter. Thai Bombers are generally slow so when they get up close and personal to a flagship and going even more slower they'll take a ton of damage which means it'll be a lot harder for them to pull off their mean bean or get off their entire rotary cannon besides that they made fixes to the torso cosmetics for the imperials to reset and the equipped emotes on the emote wheel being reset as well missiles can now be locked on deployed turrets which is quite interesting but other than that it's just mostly leveling out music that was too loud or sound effects that were too big and sound effects for your starfighter not working etc all of this is again in the pinned comment down below as for story they fixed an issue in mission 11 where the player could not progress normally if a frigate was destroyed without detonating the clusters they also fixed the issue where the player would instantly die in the final mission of the game if they flew ahead of the objective before the asteroid would separate fix an issue where the game would load infinitely if the player changed difficulties while playing fix an issue where some assets were not loading correctly in the cutscene of mission 10 fix an issue in mission 7 where the convey would stop moving if the player didn't complete the objective in time fix an issue in mission 9 where the player could get no response when requesting a supply fix an issue where gunny could endlessly spin in mission 1 which is quite funny that and just dozens of other minor bug fixes for ui they added the ability to turn off all tutorials improve the messaging to make it clearer which input was unbound when remapping controls fix the issue where players could not open up the scoreboard after the map if they were dead when the match is ended i had that issue fix an issue where the player's level shown at the end of the round screen could be different from the player's actual level had that issue as well fix an issue where the kill feed would not actually display kills caused by unstable engine and other multiple minor ui improvements and tweaks next up is vr they fixed an issue where the starfighters decals would only appear on one lens Fixed an issue where the monkey lizard hologram was not visible in PSVR. Made the player's pilot model look less unnatural when looking around. Fixed an issue where explosions could appear at a lower visual fidelity than intended on ultra setting. Improved cinematics to reduce or eliminate flickering of VR users who are experiencing it. Fixed an issue where the New Republic pilot's radars are blank in the kill cam. Fixed an issue where the sparks caused by the Astromex repairing the Starfighter would go in the wrong direction. Very minor stuff. And lastly, the other minor little thing is the versus AI. They adjusted the difficulty modifiers for the easy difficulty setting after finding it was too hard to beat and fixed an issue where the music could get stuck on one track. And finally, fixed an issue where the enemy squadron was targeted by the target enemy AI option. And there you have it. That is all the changes for 2.0 of Star Wars Squadrons. Now, for my thoughts and opinions, I think they've done well above beyond what I expected them to do here. I think a lot of these changes they've added into the game were probably going to be spread out over 2.1 or even 2.2 updates but it looks like they've jammed it all into one into the 2.0 update. Really love the changes to the lever system. That is definitely better than I expected, and I think it's very reasonable. The rank zero bug fix, obviously I'm so glad that it's fixed, as well as the rank reset option. And of course, the balance changes to the TIE Bomber. I do think the TIE Bomber didn't get as much of a nerf as I'd like it to. That rotary cannon is absolutely deadly, and it saw no changes. Whilst everything else under its armory, I would say is relatively balanced. So things like the multi-lock missile and the mean beam, I think are okay in their own right. I don't think they needed changes. However, I did expect the rotary cannon damage to drop just a little bit, but it does seem that is not the case. Personally though, I think this is a lot of change for Star Wars Squadrons that is actually going to make people want to come back and actually play properly. 
Like you got to remember this 2.0 update is fundamentally going to change how you play squadrons and how much you value those fleet battle ranked games. What was once more casual and just fun to play is going to be a lot more serious for us now. And it'll finally be great to play against players that are on my level and definitely keep me on my toes. Plus, it's going to be absolutely amazing for new players that decide to get this game for the first time and play it for the first time. They are going to be the first players of this game to actually play it against people of their own calibre. And I think it will make it a lot more easier to ease into the game and enjoy it for the way it's supposed to be enjoyed. But those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, which is, of course, our question of the day. What do you think of these version 2.0 changes? Do you think it's more than enough? Do you think it's not enough? Let me know why and all your thoughts and opinions on that in the comments down below. I'll be reading all of them as well as replying to some of you. I am super, super, super interested in what you think about this. And will it actually make you come back to Star Wars Squadrons if you stop playing? That's another question I want to know. But other than that, guys, that is the version 2.0 wrap up. I have been Charlie. You've been watching X2 and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.